Shalom, brothers and sisters. So, let's take a moment and talk Israel, Jews, Judaism, the whole current situation in the world around that, and all the latest news stories in one nice long segment. So, starting out with anti-Semitism is on the rise. Mirrored attacks in Zurich and Paris put Swiss and French authorities on alert and leave the Jewish community on edge. In the last few days, mirrored anti-Semitic attacks rocked Zurich and Paris and reveal a situation that Jews live in in Europe right now. Last month, local Swiss media reported a police investigation into a business in Davos. Davos, where they have that meeting every year. Davos. Where a sign in Hebrew displayed, declared, Jews were barred from renting ski gear in Davos. Interesting, don't you think? Islamic attack in Switzerland. 15-year-old Muslim migrant shouting death to all Jews and Allahu Akbar stabs a 50-year-old Orthodox Jew. The attack occurred around 9.30 p.m. following an altercation and sending shockwaves through the city. While authorities continue to investigate the full context of the events, boy stabs older man, context, They've confirmed the attack's anti-Jewish motive. Swift action by the police led to the apprehension of the Muslim teenager at the scene and the victim was rushed to the hospital for urgent medical treatment. Stabbed because you're a Jew. Dirty Jew, 60-year-old man wearing a yarmulke, beaten as he left synagogue. Attacker is on the run. A man in his 60s wearing a yarmulke was the victim of a targeted anti-Jewish attack in the 20th arrondissement of Paris as he was leaving a synagogue late Friday afternoon. The attacker is at large. The Minister of the Interior referred to the incident as an unspeakable act on the social network X. A witness to the scene reportedly confided that they heard the attacker insult the victim as a dirty Jew. A Yarmulka, by the way, in case you didn't know what that is, is the little keeper that they wear on the back of their heads. Just because you're a Jew coming out of your synagogue, you can get stabbed or beaten up just for existing. And the world's not screaming about that. The world's not having marches about that. The world's not freaking out about the rise of anti-Semitism. No, that's all good. They're stressing about the Palestinians. They're stressing about Hamas. Shame. Poor thing. It's just a political organization that rapes and puts babies in ovens. The world can live with that. But they don't have any problem with Jews getting attacked everywhere. And again, I'm going to say this that's happening all over the world and accepted by the whole world as normal and not really doing anything about it is going to drive the final holdouts of Jews around the world. The final push of all of them to go home to Eretz Israel, their home country where they're surrounded by their own and they feel safe and secure and defended by their own. This will be the push that brings them to one place for the final week of Daniel. Watch. Republican senators tell Biden to stop anti-settler sanctions. Nine Republican senators wrote a letter to Joe Biden urging him to rescind his policy of imposing sanctions on certain residents of Judea and Samaria and to retract these statements in a memo criticizing Israel's operations in Gaza. He'd have to get Obama's permission for that and that's not coming. In addition, Biden issued a memo stating that the U.S. may consider withholding aid from Israel until the administration received certain assurances that the IDF was not targeting Palestinian civilians. The letter said that Biden's policy grants the State Department broad authority to arbitrarily punish Israelis in Judea and Samaria with no defined standards for determining when sanctions are warranted. If continued under the guise of peace, security, or stability, peace and security, then sudden destruction comes upon them. It appears the State Department can punish any Israeli at once. The letter pointed out that the hypocrisy of only penalizing Israelis, but not similarly sanctioning Palestinians for violence. 
Yet the State Department hasn't acted against the Palestinian Authority, which makes pay to slay payments to terrorists for murdering Israeli civilians. In addition, the letter criticized the State Department for not calling out the Palestinians in light of the violence against Israelis in Judea and Samaria, which increased by 350 percent in 2023. The violence against Israelis in Judea and Samaria, Judea, Samaria, in your Bible, belonging to the Jews, increased 350%. But no one's got a problem with that. Again, why? Because it's just Jews. Sounds quite Nazi, doesn't it? Welcome to the end of the world. Please stay buckled up. Keep your hands inside the vehicle at all times. Things just get rougher from here on in. The U.S. blocks the U.S. UNSC resolution condemning Israel over the aid truck stampede disaster. The United States on Thursday blocked the council, blaming Israel for more than 100 alleged deaths, because Hamas said so, so it must be true, that resulted from a stampede around an aid convoy in northern Gaza on Thursday morning, for which there is footage, by the way, provided by Israel. The U.S. was the only country of the 15 council members that didn't support the statement put forward by Algeria, pro-Hamas, pro-Palestine, in an emergency closed meeting. Emergency meetings. If Israel goes to the toilet, there's an emergency closed meeting and they'll discuss toilet paper use. Israel said the majority of injuries were a result of large crowds swarming around the aid truck convoy and trying to loot it leading to a stampede responsible for the deaths of most of the victims. Do they believe Israel? No. Even though Israel released the footage, are they going to consider that? No. Emergency closed-door meeting. Why? Because the UN hates Israel. Israel demands Hamas provide list of hostages still alive. Reasonable, right? Especially since the whole world's forgotten they exist and doesn't really scream about that at all anymore. Israel tells Qatar and Egypt there will be no more talks on hostage release deal until Hamas provides a list of hostages that are still alive. Egypt and Qatar promised Israel that it sent a delegation to Doha this week for talks on the humanitarian aspects of the proposed deal. They would bring answers from Hamas on which hostages are still alive and put pressure on the group to be flexible on the number of Palestinian prisoners that demands be released. However, senior Israeli officials say that after three days of talks in Qatar, the Israeli delegation returned to Israel on Thursday without any answers. Hamas is refusing to say how many are still alive because they don't want to admit how many they've actually killed. Do they even have enough for a hostage deal at this stage of the game? These are the un- Unfun questions that no one wants to ask. Grandson of Hezbollah leader eliminated. Terrorist belonging to Imam Hussein division, a grandson of Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah was killed in a strike, reports in Syria say. IDF unaware of the kinship between the two. <laughs> I wonder... The Kol Habira website affiliated with the Syrian opposition has reported that Abbas Ahmad Khalil, grandson of Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah, was eliminated in southern Lebanon. According to the report, Nasrallah's grandson was active with the Imam Hussein division affiliated with Iran and operates for the Hezbollah terrorist organization. You can't tell me Israel didn't know. Mossad, one of the best intelligence agencies in the world. They definitely knew who they were targeting. So, yeah, I'd go with Israel knew and they're sending Hassan a very clear message. Something to the effect of, you're next. Hamas delegation meets with Russian Deputy Foreign Minister because they're welcome in Russia. The Hamas delegation met with the special envoy of the Russian Deputy Foreign Minister, Mikhail Bogdanov, at the headquarters of the Russian Foreign Ministry on Friday. Hamas delegation included members of the political arm of the terror organization, including Musa Abu Marzouk and Hussam Bedran. The movement's delegation thanked the Russian Federation for their position in support of the Palestinian people and for hosting the Palestinian meetings, Hamas said on their Telegram channel. 
When people like Hamas thank you on their channel, you should really reevaluate your life and your positions. Really, really. The terror organization stated that the Hamas delegation briefed FM Bogdanov on the course of the Al-Aqsa flood battle as they emphasized the need for the continuation of the war until the Gazans gain their freedom. So out of their own mouths, there will be no peace they want the war to continue until they win. So now no one's screaming about that. No one's got an issue with that. But when Israel says they won't stop, they will continue until they win and they wipe out Hamas. The whole world's got an issue with it. Do you see the imbalance here? Because it's Israel. Israeli security minister is banned from intelligence meetings. Itamar ben Gavir has been sidelined after he leaked a series of sensitive documents and took illegal photos of secret briefing. The Israeli security minister was banned from the meetings because of this. Itamar ben Gavir is also accused of taking the illegal photos of attendees at high-level intelligence meetings. The gaffes mean that Mr. ben Gavir may have broken the very guidelines he is appointed to protect and enforce. His actions have also led Israel's domestic intelligence chief, Shin Bet, to accuse the minister of leaking information and breaching protocols such as bringing mobile phones into meetings. Shin Bet announced last month that they would refuse to hold any more meetings with Ben Gavir after relations between the minister and the security agency broke down. The barring of Ben Gavir from attending intelligence briefings means the security minister is now left in the dark on key information about national security and intelligence. The system can't work. A senior Israeli intelligence source told the Telegraph, the biggest threat to Israel from within is Ben Gavir. He acts with his own rules and tries to disregard everyone around him in spite of his not having any background in national security and defense issues. He is the liability. Now, there's two ways to look at this. Number one, they could be setting him up, and I'm not defending him. You know how I feel about Ben Gavir and my experience with him. They could be setting him up to completely remove him just before Ramadan because they know that he will be in Islam's face. He will go up to Temple Mount. He will restrict access. He will do everything he feels is best for Israel, which is correct, whether people like it or not. So this is a great way to remove him legally. The other thing is that, yeah, he could literally just be this bad and they actually need to remove him as fast as possible. But don't throw away all his ideas. He's got some really good ideas that are good for Israel and their security of their civilians. Then, Benny Gantz. You guys have seen this whole thing going down and this is twisted. So let's look at both angles on this. Gantz arrives in Washington ahead of meetings with Harris and Blinken. I mean, what is he going to discuss with Harris? How to have a weird, freaky laugh. Israeli minister without portfolio, Benny Gantz, National Unity, arrived in Washington, D.C. on Sunday ahead of a series of planned meetings with senior Biden administration officials in a trip reportedly kept secret from Benjamin Netanyahu. Gantz, a longtime rival of Netanyahu, left the opposition and joined the government following the October 7th invasion. When they got that all emergency government together, the war cabinet. A spokesperson for Gantz claimed that the minister had in fact notified Netanyahu of the planned trip. The National Unity Party chief and former defense minister is slated to meet Vice President Kamala Harris on Monday to discuss plans for the post-war administration of the Gaza Strip, reforming the Palestinian Authority and the Biden administration's concerns over Israel's looming ground operation in the city of Rafah. Transportation Minister and Netanyahu ally Miri Regev from Likud blasted Gantz's Washington trip, hinting that it was orchestrated by the Biden administration to subvert the Netanyahu government. There is only one prime minister that makes decisions, and his name is Benjamin Netanyahu, Regev told Radio Call Chai on Sunday. Fellow Likud minister David Amsalem made similar claims, accusing Gantz of being used 
by the Biden administration to undermine the Israeli government's position. Americans probably see you as the address to lead the process for a Palestinian state and the cessation of fighting in Gaza, Amsalem tweeted. Mr. Gantz, you joined the emergency government in order to create unity during an emergency, not to be a Trojan horse. Your trip this morning to the US is totally against government protocol, and you are the one who is always whining that people are violating agreements. I remind you, you joined the emergency government to create a consensus during wartime, not to stop the IDF from winning the war or to make an opportunity to lead the process of establishing a Palestinian state that will eliminate the state of Israel. Benny Gantz confronted the reports in US against Netanyahu's wishes, asked if the US should be dealing with him instead of Netanyahu by reporters in the capital on Monday, Gantz replied, no, 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 Israel has a prime minister and everything is okay. Gantz told the Washington Examiner after leaving McConnell's office, the visit is going well. I think I'm explaining Israel's interest and how I see the United States' interest. The relations have been well accepted warmly. Good discussions, open and candid. Gantz and his team were the ones who requested meetings with the Biden administration, White House officials said ahead of the visit. Two sources in congressional leadership confirmed as much to the Washington Examiner, saying Gantz's office reached out to set up the meetings. In which case, to me, it looks like he's thinking of the day after the war and who's going to replace Netanyahu, because Netanyahu will then be replaced, and who's going to lead Israel in that time frame. What he doesn't realize is Antichrist will probably replace Netanyahu at that point. But, you know, we don't have to worry about that because we won't be here. Hence why I keep telling you to pray for Israel, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, pray for their eyes to open, their, their hearts of stone to turn to flesh, and that they see Messiah now, and a lot of them can escape the absolute slaughter that is lying ahead for them at the doors. Then a nice one, which I really agree with. Nowhere in the Bible do you find the words West Bank, says Troy Miller, CEO of National Religious Broadcasters. The resolution that has been pushed urges Christian media broadcasters to refrain from using the term West Bank for the disputed territories, advocating instead for the biblical names Judea and Samaria. One of the things we came up with was understanding what is biblical Israel. Every Christian who has a Bible today and knows, reads through Joshua, understands the boundaries, and nowhere in there do you find the words West Bank. You find Judea and Samaria, said Miller. Now go to the New Testament for Christians, and we know where Jesus ministered. He went to Judea. He ministered in Judea. He went through Samaria. We know the story of the Samaritan woman and so on. It's natural for Christians. It's Judea and Samaria and it belongs to Israel. Who says so? God. Got a problem? Take it up with him. He'll be down in seven years. You can see him face to face. And in the meantime, you can learn all about him through a series of judgment that's coming on this whole world for seven years. People, it's difficult now for most Christians to stand up and say, I stand with Israel. Now's the time. With the Lord watching that sees everything we do and the intents of our hearts to be able to stand up and say, regardless of the pushback, regardless of what the world says, regardless of the attacks, I stand with Israel and I will pray for Israel. Shalom.